Welcome, Trinidad and Tobago, to our News for Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Prime Minister addresses the defence bill in the Parliament. Government to close the Carrera Island prison and hopes to also close the Port of Spain prison eventually. And the Transport Ministry cracks down on vehicles in poor conditions. In our top story, the Defence Amendment Bill presents no new challenges to the Army and will give consideration to the review of the legislation. The police and army are institutions of the state and must be utilized. This, according to Prime Minister the Honorable Kamla Pesad Bisesa, while giving her contributions during the debate in Parliament on the Defence Amendment Bill. The Honorable Prime Minister explained that joint patrols were nothing new and that the soldiers were able to carry out the duties which are to be assumed if the legislation is passed. We have 5,000 soldiers whom we are already paying whom are there and willing and able to serve. And Mr. Speaker, let me disabuse the minds of those who continue to spit venom when they say the word soldier. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a venomous sound. Yeah, yeah. Soldier. Yeah. Soldier. Those very soldiers have defended us from the beginning yeah. when they were there. with venom in, in, in the voices. When, at the same time, these are the people for 10 years, for the last decade, that they have been used by administration after administration in joint patrols with the police. So they're already there. In the long term, we recruit more officers, yes. Then we have to find more budgets. So we have a budget already for the uh, Defense Force. So I, I say, I think both the police and the army personnel continue to serve with distinction. We have confidence and faith in the police and in the army. And it's not an issue as, as a sort of voce I'm hearing, looking for friends. They are institutions of the state. Yes. And therefore they must be utilized in defense of the state and the citizens of the state. The Prime Minister explained that the legislation presented a clause that allowed the powers of arrest and other responsibilities to expire after a two-year period. We are not proposing that we be given these powers forever. And indeed, in Jamaica, Guyana, Bahamas, Antigua, Barbuda, they gave the powers ad infinitum or until such time as Parliament may want to amend it. That's not what we're proposing. Because this is, this is a, something that is new in our jurisdiction, giving them the police, partial police powers. We are proposing at the end of two years that the bill will cease so that we have two years to see it's working, it's not working. We come back and we review it. Correct. If we have to. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. The government has announced plans to close the Carrera Island prison and hopes to also close the Port of Spain prison eventually. This was announced by Minister of Justice, Senator the Honorable Chrislyn Moore. Cabinet is, is pleased to announce that it has agreed to the closure of Carrera Prison by December 2013. Justice Minister Senator Crystalyn Moore made the announcement at Thursday's post-Cabinet media briefing. She cites the facility's current conditions, logistical complications and overhousing of inmates as reasons for its closure. Ms. Moore says the prison, which was established in 1937, currently houses almost double the 185 inmates it was initially built to cater for. She adds logistical problems such as getting potable water to the island are proving to be costly and resource consuming. Although it was redesigned, the population that it currently houses is well above the design capacity. In addition to which it poses peculiar challenges, both for visitors uh, to the inmates, as well as the carriage of water and goods to the island. The island, of course, uses water that is carried across to the island by ferry. So all these challenges, the maintaining of the island, it is a small island prone to erosion, all the costs associated with maintaining the island and maintaining the prison have really demonstrated that the, the structure or the plant is no longer suitable for purpose.
Minister Moore says the prisoners will be moved to the maximum security prison in Aruka. The cabinet has agreed to close the facility by the end of the year and to rehouse the inmates presently housed there at the maximum security prison. Um, cabinet has also agreed for certain upgrades to occur at that prison in order to facilitate the prisoner transfer. As to the future plans for the island, Minister Moore says that this will be decided by the Ministry of National Security. She explains that the island, if not secured, can pose a risk to the nation's security. Carrera Prison is going to be handed over to national security. Obviously, it is an, it is an island that is capable of being landed on. It is an island that currently houses 300 plus persons. So if it is left unattended, there is a real likelihood that it could be used for unsavory purposes. So it is in the best interest of all concerned that national security take over the facility and that has been agreed. Meanwhile, speaking on the planned judicial complexes to be built along the east-west corridor, the Justice Minister says the matters are out for tender and before NIPDECT. She insists that they will be coming, however, as the court facilities in the east-west corridor are currently no longer sufficient. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. After the break, the Transport Ministry cracking down on poor working vehicles. Stay with us. Never leave items like MP3 players, portable DVD players, laptops and briefcases on view inside your vehicle. It is an open invitation for a thief. Don't leave them on show. If you cannot take them with you, place them in the trunk of your car. Remember, crime prevention is everyone's business. A message from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. Welcome back. Drivers whose cars are modified or are in a poor working condition will have them seized by licensing officers soon. This as the Transport Minister, the Honorable Chandra Sharma, announced a crackdown on the nation's roads. The minister says cars unsuitable for the road were contributing to the high accident rate, which at the end of 2012 saw 35,000 collisions, with close to 200 people being killed. Look at the number of people injured. 50 million. You know what that means? Somebody has to stay home to, to help out that injured person. It means our hospitals are going to be overcrowded. It means we are losing important manpower that cannot be replaced. 90% of these accidents in developing countries. Small little Trinidad and Tobago, 700,000 vehicles. Speaking at the launch of the National Road Safety Awareness Campaign, at Petrotrin Staff Club Point of Pair, Minister Sharma says if further legislation was required to increase road safety, the government would act accordingly. I would be asking the PS to start a program alive at 35. We have to save our young men and women. We are going to be encouraging more and more defensive driving. Providing more statistics. The minister says the total amount of fines received by the judiciary in 2012 for traffic violations was $3 million, which he says was an indicator that too many people were not adhering to the law. But by 2027 years from today, it's going to be close to 2 million road deaths. So don't ignore the statistics. Don't become part of it. And the only way is to become involved. Minister Sharma says alcohol and cell phones were road safety hazards. We consume the, uh, the most amount of scotch in this country, a small country in the world. We drink the most beers. We have the most cell phones in the world for a small country. You know the, the statistics? We have sold more than two cell phones per person. We don't have the legislation just yet, but it's coming. The Minister of Transport says reckless driving and lack of respect for the law were alarming for such a small country as Trinidad and Tobago. Engaging tertiary education students in social responsibility is being incorporated into the curriculum as gaining work experience in the community through the Student Engagement Program. 
representatives from the University of Louisville are here in Trinidad and Tobago for the third symposium on student engagement, which, will, which took place, sorry, which will look at reinforcing the existing program. Tertiary Education Minister explains how fostering a culture of engagement among our students can help change our society. Students involved or interested in community engagement and volunteer outreach programs have a chance to give back to society while at the same time earn work experience. The topic is one being highlighted in the third symposium on student engagement here in Trinidad and Tobago. This year's theme centers on engaging the community, strengthening the culture of engagement. Tertiary Education and Skills Training Minister, the Honorable Fazal Karam, explains how the program stands to benefit students across Trinidad and Tobago in both credits and experience. Service learning is given of oneself to service to the community and learning in the process. And in some cases, if you are in other parts of the higher education system, we can also use the acronym or use the slogan of learning while you are earning. Why should students be involved in the community? Later on, I would come back to making a statement, but if I may say so from now, I think if we might want to platform what I have to say, it can be platformed on the basis of seeing beyond the classroom. That to me is a significant aspect of what service learning and even service teaching and community engagement is all about. Minister Karam says the program looks to instill students' social responsibility and better position them to give back to the community. It's to develop the spirit of volunteerism among our young people. What is often referred to as and what I tend to call as opposed to corporate social responsibility, I refer to this as student social responsibility, where persons give back to the places that help them to be where they are and to return their rich knowledge, experiences, attitudes, and values, and skills to rebuilding a better place than they would have left it. To relate student learning and research to real life activities is another hallmark of the project. That is to make learning come to life where students will become better all wrong persons for the experience. This year, the program continues in a joint venture with students from the University of Louisville to better build the program and strengthen the engagement process. Pamela Curtis, Director of Civic Engagement and Leadership and Service at the University, expresses her pleasure in the continued partnership. I'm especially happy to be part of this ongoing conversation that started uh, two years ago that is culminating in this third gathering on community engagement and looking forward to a very lively continuing conversation that brings us back year after year um, around this concept of community. While the concept is one not new to this country, Perez and Planning Officer at the University of the West Indies, Chandar Supasad, explains how this practice has been used for years here in Trinidad and Tobago. This is done through the Department of Electrical Engineering where the students are divided into groups and they have, one of their projects is to conceptualize a program in their area from beginning to end and execute that program, including getting funding for the project. So they have to come up with a project proposal, get the funding, implement the project, and physically build whatever they have to do. So that's just one example of what UE has. Other examples would be in social work, uh, the dentists, the doctors, the pharmacists, they all go out and do service learning without even calling it service learning because it's part of the curriculum. But we recognize it as service learning. University of Louisville will work with local university students to look at ways in which it can build communities through the student engagement and service learning program. Kimberly Ram Kalawan, News 4. Up next, we tell you of some initiatives to prepare our athletes for international competitions. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. The Ministry of Sport and the Sports Company of Trinidad and Tobago are continuously implementing initiatives which will prepare our athletes for international competition. Last weekend, our junior athletes had a chance to test their skills against top talent from the region and North America. Here's Gregory McBurney with more. 
The top junior athletes from the U.S., Canada, Bahamas, Jamaica, Antigua, and Trinidad and Tobago took to the track for the first ever Trinidad and Tobago Relay Carnival Games. The event was inspired by the world-famous Penn Relays, which are hosted by the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia every year. The best performing teams at the Trinidad Relay Carnival will be rewarded with funding to attend the Penn Relay Games this year. Toko Secondary School were the first team to stand atop the podium as they won the opening event, the high school girls B Sprint Medley, in a time of 4 minutes 29.59 seconds, beating Eldorado West Secondary into second place with a time of 4 minutes 48.13 seconds. Toko then went on to take top spot again in the girls 4x100 girls B category with a time of 51.88 seconds, Holy Name Secondary coming in a little over half a second behind at 52.24 seconds and Eldorado West finishing third in 53.94 seconds. It wasn't long though before the foreigners signaled their intent to pose a serious challenge with Team USA two races in taking a commanding lead in the high school boys 200 by 200 by 400 by 800 medley race. The Americans running an impressive 3 minutes 46.36 seconds, pushing Mayaro Secondary into second place with a 3 minutes 50.66 second run and Toko Secondary resorting themselves to third with a time of 3 minutes 54.39 seconds. The foreigners continue to show off themselves with a good performance in the high school girls A category, this time the Canadians putting their best foot forward. The team anchored by Mariam Abdul Rashid clocked 4 minutes 24.27 seconds, crossing the line more than a minute ahead of Miao's secondary, whose time of 5 minutes 34.63 seconds gave them the second place. And it was the Canadians again, this time the boys, to repeat the feat in the boys' high school medley A race. The Canadians getting some stiffer competition this time around, but still managing the win, finishing in a time of 3 minutes 28.04 seconds, the Antiguans managing their first medal of the Games with a second place time of 3 minutes 34.08 seconds and Toko Secondary's 3 minutes 34.98 seconds earned them a third place finish. And while the young ones got their chance to shine, it was the men's invitational 4x100 meter relay race that stole the show. Trinidad and Tobago's Zwade Hewitt and 2004 Olympic Games men's 400 meter champion Jeremy Warriner teamed up with Americans Woodrow Randall and Marcus Boyd to form an elite quartet team. They ran off against Jamaica and the Bahamas in the 4x1 relay. Randall kicked out of the blocks for the elite quartet. He handed the baton to Boyd. Warriner took it around the curve for the third leg and TNT's Hewitt running anchor and bringing home the win. Speaking to the media after the win, Hewitt says his injury has slowed down his progress a bit, but he is confident he will be fit to represent this country at the World Championships. I started a little bit late because I injured last year, stretch fracture. So I've been taking my time a little bit, and that's the good thing about not being in school. I can take my time and do what I have to do and focus on myself and make sure I'm 100 percent before I start back racing and everything. So right now, it's just a progress and aim for the championships later this year. Hewitt says his training with former Olympic champion Warner is paying great dividends. No, we do more. I train more with him specifically, and not with the team because. Now that now that I'm out of school and a party team, so I train with him now per se. So it's a big motivator because I know what he has done and knowing what he has done, that could help me get to that level, you know. Hewitt says he's hoping to consistently clock sub 45 second times to ensure he can earn a spot on the podium at the World Championships. Gregory McBurney, New Sports 4. When we return, the Caribbean Urban Forum opens. Stay with us. Welcome back. The top skilled persons in various fields of expertise have been selected to represent this country at an international world skilled event. They along with their former competitors were recognized for their commitment and the development of their various skills. Participants in the World Skills Trinidad and Tobago competition have received their various awards in recognition of their great skills and talents. The award ceremony took place at the Centre of Excellence and the National Training Agency's CEO gave an overview of the competition. The competition took place from October 4th, 2012 
and competitors were assessed using international standards as set out by World Skills International. Persons competed in the areas of welding, automobile technology, joinery, fashion technology, food preparation, restaurant service, graphic design, web design, information technology, networking, hairdressing, wall and floor tiling, and electrical installation. They competed in the basic and advanced categories of competition. Overall, the competition was a major success with over 1,000 applications and 150 competitors. During his feature address, the Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, Senator the Honorable Fazal Karim, passionately recognized the talents of the participants. He stated that initiatives and competitions such as these held many benefits to not only the trained and employees, but also employers and the national community. The economic linkage or the societal linkage or the linkage thereof in terms of the training institutions and the employers are very direct and well correlated. The outputs of the training system will become the inputs to the workforce. And therefore what we want to ensure is that we move from a state of welfare to workforce, from a stage of hand out to hand up, from a stage of dependence to independence and interdependence. That is what this ceremony is also about. You are the future leaders of our workforce. You are our future technicians and technologists. You are future multi-billionaire success stories in terms of entrepreneurship. You are our business startups that MIT speaks about and Harvard speaks about, and Stanford speaks about. You are the future in terms of mobile applications. You are going to be not only world class in terms of homegrown and world known, you are going to be the future success stories and the visionaries of Trinidad and Tobago. And I congratulate you, and I so endorse you from now. The top awardees will represent Trinidad and Tobago later this year at World Skills Leipzig Germany, which is the international event that will see this country competing against others around the world. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. The impact of land use on the development and management of cities is often seen as slow process. But finding ways in making this quick and far reaching lies in addressing specific policy issues. Hosting this year's Caribbean Urban Forum, Senator Dr. The Honorable Bohindradat Tiwari, Minister of Planning and Sustainable Development, says this can only happen when we look at it from a holistic perspective that ensures sustainability in all arenas. Regional planning and development heads met to review their plans for land use and urban growth during this year's Caribbean Urban Forum here at the Trinidad Hilton Hotel. The need to ensure proper management of growth of cities has often been viewed as a slow process and finding a way to change this to a faster pace must be achieved. Planning and Sustainable Development Minister Dr. Bo Tiwari says finding the right balance lies in the right management of resources. The management of urban growth and the management of development in the urban sector and the way we manage the development of growth strategies in Trinidad and Tobago has serious implications for the competitive capacity of the country called Trinidad and Tobago. So it's not just a question of planning. It's not just a question of organization. It's not just a question of development from the point of view of communities or geographical location. It has to do with the capacity for sustainable, sustainability of the country, both in a population and community sense, in an environmental sense, but also in terms of, a, of economic competitiveness and sustainability. One issue the minister points to which requires planning is the growth of the number of vehicles on the nation's roads. He says ensuring proper infrastructure is in place to support this is also part of the development of urban spaces. Without any policy intervention, the growth rate of private vehicles is forecast to reach unmanageable proportions by 2015. Already we have 700,000 cars on the road for a population of just 103 million people. And they all flow in one direction at particular times of the day. Minister Tiwari believes solutions to each challenge 
can be found if collaborative efforts among all stakeholders are made. We can look at things as problems and challenges, but we can also look at the problems and challenges as opportunities for solutions. And I would like to think, with my view of the world, that a problem exists because a solution already exists somewhere that needs to be matched to the problem. And if we can take that kind of approach, I think we can solve a lot of things that have been haunting us for years. A difference in attitude and disposition and mindset can make a world of difference in terms of solution provision. CUF 2013 is designed to address specific policy issues within the Caribbean urban sector, as well as to support the collaborative efforts of planners in the Caribbean and the wider Americas. The meeting runs until 15th March and will look at local governance and community engagement, as well as heritage and culture and the revitalization of inner city neighborhoods as part of urban agenda. Kimberly Ramkalawan, News 4. And that story brings us to the end of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Thank you for watching.